In preparation for the upcoming solar distance test and the lunar distance test, I have done uh, two calculations which I've uploaded attached to this, uh, this video. Uh, both of those were mathematical exercises, uh, maybe not, not all that interesting to a lot of people, but if you're into math, then uh, you can have a look at these things and uh, see what's going on there. The first experiment was uh, in preparation for the blood moon on September 27th. What I would intend to go out and uh, turn some angles to the moon on that particular uh, date, try to calculate a distance to it. Uh, so in preparation for that, I calculated the positions of the moon and the and the sun to have a look at where they would be expected uh, to be at that at that point in time. So one of the most uh, interesting results in this is that when I take uh, anticipated angles from different cities that will be on the sun side during the during the eclipse, they're published by the Naval Observatory. Those angles do not con converge on a uh, on a uh, object that is greater than three million miles from uh, Moscow. So the, those uh, data, I didn't turn the, that data myself, that's published data, and I simply did the calculations on the distance to the sun based on that. So the other result, uh, assuming that uh, the sun is in the location uh, where where it was calculated to be, and the moon as well. The the other result from that test is that the moon definitely is on the far side of the Earth and within the shadow of the Earth at the time of the eclipse. So that's uh, it's pretty clear if you work out the the geometry uh, and plot it up in three-dimensional coordinates, you'll see that it works out that way. The second test that I ran was that I took the oblate spheroid model uh, spreadsheet, the calculation spreadsheet, and converted it over to a flat earth model. I replaced all the spherical equations with flat disk type equations to make that uh, to make that model work for a flat earth scenario. And I used the same data from the previous uh, experiment, uh, plotted that up, and you can see the how that plots as well. What the, the result is that from the Midwest and South America, particularly Michigan and uh, Tennessee and Santiago, the the angles that are turned, or the angles that are published uh, by the Naval Observatory for that date and time, they converge on an object that is 1,000 to 1,800 feet, or 1,800 feet above the surface of the Earth. But then at the same time, you go out to the West Coast, and from Alberta and Washington, you're turning very low angles, or you, or you're seeing the sun at very low angles uh, on near, near the horizon, which means that if you project those angles over to where the other people are seeing the sun at the same time, you you come up much lower than that. That means that you need to have the curvature of the Earth in order for the the whole set of observations to to work out. So, uh, from Kentucky, from PT41 reset, I can see the sun uh, below the but below the level by uh, a half a degree or so at times, and what that would mean is it would have to have a negative uh, distance if it were in a flat Earth uh, environment. So. Those are the results uh, in order for everything to work out mathematically. The, the WGS84 system works much better than the flat earth system. And uh, you can have a look at those calculations and 
and see what you think. Thanks for watching this video.